All right. Ooh. So give me a second while I head over to. Uh, I guess we could do it on Dueling Book. I guess. I think I think that would be uh, the best way. Yeah. Oh, cool. 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 Um... Still no actual simulator, so you know, <laughs> you have to deal with uh, Dueling Book. Okay. I mean, they. Do you know the remote dueling thing is pretty big right now, but. Um... I would say opinions are varied on that, so. Because <laughs> people can, uh, you know, coincidentally win a game or two without people. I, I don't know. Did, did you like? Did you hear about the the South American um, remote dual invitation or not? No, no, I didn't. Tell me a little bit more. Okay, so basically, like in the in the finals, right? Mm -hmm. One of the guys who was playing uh, Virtual World, which is one of like, which is arguably the best deck probably in the format, mm -hmm. against uh, Zodiac Outlet. And then game one, he activates uh, Starcream Gamma. That, I mean, that's, that's fine, right? That tends to happen. But then it's not actually on his deck list. So that's pretty interesting. And then at some point in like game three, I think, uh, he draws a card and like it. Yeah, exactly. The Denko Seca thing. Yeah, exactly. That's it. And uh, someone in chat knows what I'm talking about. And he uh, just he draws a card, mm -hmm. and then his hands like disappears from the screen for a little bit, and then suddenly he goes like normal summon Benko Saka, and I don't know, it was ju just kind of crazy to be honest. Like, ah, that's hella sus. Okay. Yeah, ex exactly. It was it was hella sus. That's the correct way to uh, <laughs> to describe what happens. All right, Josh. Could you could you kind of give us an explanation of who you are, uh, what you do, uh, what your content like, and you know? Uh, yeah, introduce I yourself. mean, sure. So uh, my name is uh, Joshua Osters. I recently, actually, like um, I would say three months ago, uh, started a YouTube channel. Uh, I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh for like eight years competitively, maybe even nine years by now, something like that. Anyway, and I mostly play like uh, rogue stuff. So not the most meta age of the decks because uh, I just think it's a lot of more fun to be creative with the game. And uh, my YouTube channel is also mostly focused on just taking a look at decks that most people might not be familiar with, basically. So yeah, that's huh? me. Oh, and I also do Digimon, by the way. Like the new Digimon card game, I do content on that as well. Alright, nice. Because I really love Digimon, so, you know. Okay, so a lot of people didn't, you know, you might say you played a little bit competitively, but so could you tell us a little bit more about your your achievements? Okay, yeah, so uh, I started playing competitively in, I would say, 2013, and actually, uh, I, I before I ever thought like a regional or a local for that matter, I uh, thought the European Championship with uh, 13 cards, extra deck, spellbook, weird times, and then... Um, after that, I topped like two more European Championships. I topped the Dutch Nationals, I want to say like seven times, probably. Mm -hmm. Seven times, I won it twice, got second one time. Uh, I got four YCS tops, one of them being uh, the first PP3 event in uh, YCS Las Vegas, together with Mr. Raphael Nevin, who you might know if you're familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, Luke Parks, who you might know if you are familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, yeah, that's uh, that's it. And most of those were with like uh, more off the wall decks, I might add. Like four of my total tops are with the Burning Abyss deck, and not all of those were in the Burning Abyss format. So, hell yeah, yeah. All that's, right. That's uh, me in a nutshell, or like not me in a nutshell, but me in the Yu-Gi-Oh competitive card game in a nutshell. <laughs> Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Give me, give me a second. Okay, I think I got a screen set up. Uh, then we'll head over to the one book. Yep, yeah, I am uh, online. My username is my name. If you, uh... Okay. So I'm gonna kind of see if I can find... There we go. Let's see. <laughs> Not really what happened, but a two-minute video of uh, paradising it. Oh, okay, okay. I guess I guess we can kind of just watch this in a minute, can we? I mean, yeah, sure. So, interesting stuff going on on the Dueling Book chat, by the way. 
I'm not paying attention to it. <laughs> I hopefully they're not saying any no no words in that one. I mean, uh, arguable, I guess. <laughs> I'm not paying attention to it. <laughs> you probably shouldn't, yeah. Alright, good. This is about a min a two minute video. People talking about it. Um, I don't think we've had any real issues on uh, Vanguard front about any of the remote dual events that we've held so far, but we don't really have any official events yet. Oh really? Yeah, I have no idea what's like going on in uh, Vanguard lands or Magic lands or whatever. To be perfectly honest with you. Mm -hmm. All right. Ah, uh, there we go. Hell yeah, four set. Ah, oh, actual skill upon skill. Excuse me, PC. Oh, I know what it is. Wait. But I can't close that yet. So we gotta hope that it loads back on time. Set four pass. Uh, okay, set four pass. Alright, nice. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Guru best deck. Uh, <laughs> one, two, three, four. Four set. Mm. Mm. Oh man, it would be crazy if the virtual player had Lightning Storm, right? right? It would be crazy. Yes. Mm. Okay. <laughs> what is he looking through his? What is he looking through his other deck for? Later. What is he I, doing? I I honestly didn't even see this. What is he doing? <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> oh, this is a parody of it. Okay, this is probably the parody of it, isn't it? Okay. Oh right, yeah, that makes uh, sense. Okay, yeah, this yeah, part yeah, is yeah. probably the parody of it. Okay, 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 okay. Ah, uh, yeah, this, this makes so much more sense, yeah. <laughs> so, shout out to the guy who edited this. Uh, oh my god, stuff. this is sick. He's looking at this. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting. Ah, uh, there it is. The binder. Okay, 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 I got, I got it. Um, Norma Sumo, then Cosica. <laughs> Okay, okay, that was like really sick. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, that was actually. And this is how I won locals. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Okay, that was a masterpiece. Hell yeah. yeah it was oh the... man, it that was actually insane though. I mean, the actual tournament, like, really, really crazy stuff. Right. Like this guy just grabs Denko Seka from his binder, and then Konami calls him King of Games. Oh nice. wait. Oh. Oh dear God! Okay, I see. Ah, these are Farfus peoples, I think. Oh dear God! Wait, something's happening in the background. Okay, so I think I know what it is. Give me a moment. Um, and I know what it is. It's because I have this program running in the background. Usually, it doesn't. It doesn't drain my PC this much, so I don't know why you're doing it this time. I don't know. I think like usually when people interact with me online, they are very unlucky. I think like. Like when I did a video with Simo, his equipment also just stopped working, so... Yeah, I don't get it. Like, this never happened. I've had, like, I had people on call playing uh, Zero, having yeah. other people in a background playing Remote Fight. <laughs> and I, with you today, it's just, okay, fair. You're right, PC. I'm sorry. Forgive. Sorry. Oh, man, shout out to the guy who's calling me Oosters Boosters. <laughs> <laughs> yes, RK Jester. It is the Just Resistors. I, I probably should have actually maybe clipped out the the image out of yesterday that I sent to you via WhatsApp. I probably should have put your face somewhere on screen with me. <laughs> Yo, I was lecker. <laughs> I mean, maybe, yeah. <laughs> oh man, Salomon Great, best deck. Did you know DD Crow is broken now? Oh yeah, actually, now I want you to kind of explain to us, like. I barely learned PCT when I used to play the game. I used to literally only learn my deck, and that's kind of the only thing I really cared about. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I never really took the game too seriously. Like, even, even like, topping some locals, topping some nationals and whatever, uh, even if it's, like, pretty mediocre in grand scheme of things, I just did it because it was fun. Um, so I never really took the game too serious. Uh, but, uh, what, what changed? What changed? Okay, so basically, uh, for the people who are familiar with uh, the more technical side of Yu-Gi-Oh! Mm -hmm. Previously, um, the OCG and the TCG had like some differences in how 
hard to interact and chain links resolve and stuff like that. Um, it's still a little bit different, to be honest, but uh, recently uh, the North American game and the European game and the Japanese game all had, you know, some linking up to do, I guess, um, with artifacts that actually uh, they should be where they activate to resolve or they should be where they resolve to activate, by the way. So, for example, um, uh, just referring to you, uh, you know, Satellar Knight, right? Previously, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you went, uh, I don't know, like, uh, I am a steer set call of the Haunted, and you go a uh, chain call of the Haunted, summon Daynap, mm -hmm. and then, you know, the chain link resolves, so Daynap hits the field, and uh, MST destroys the call of the Haunted, then Daynap goes to the grave. Uh, Daynap could actually still trigger yeah. in the European card game. Yeah, Because correct. it actually, it met its trigger condition, right? It was summoned. Yeah. Um, but now they actually decided to change it up to how it was in the uh, North America as well, where uh, if it isn't actually, you know, on the field where it should be to activate its effect, when the effect would actually act activate, it just can't activate its effect. So in the example I just gave you, a uh, data actually wouldn't be able to trigger, which mm -hmm. personally I think is weird, because it did sort of meet its trigger condition, but they, um, they decided to just go with the North American ruling worldwide, basically. Which I guess is an improvement because now everywhere it's the same, which is better than like one card game having multiple rulings for the same thing happening. Mm, um, okay. So that is one of the changes, and then the other one is um, you are familiar with Sky Striker cards, right? Yeah, you put into those nights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so basically, uh, you can only summon uh, something like Gagari once per turn. Mm -hmm. But then previously, let's say I go into Gagari and I strike it. Mm -hmm. The game sort of just figured, uh, man, you went to Gagari, tough luck on you, no more Gagari for you. Mm. But now they actually, since Solemn uh, Strike negates the summon, the game is actually like, oh, you never summoned it, which makes sense in my opinion. That makes so sense, you can yeah. actually summon Gagari again, yeah. Uh, so, so the same it, thing with like uh, the activation of something else. Uh, and you can reactivate it again, so it's the stuff like you can activate this card once per turn, and it gets negated, you can just activate it again. Yeah, so that was actually the case before, unless it said use, but mm -hmm. now uh, it's more easily when you relate to something like Pot of Duality, actually. Mm -hmm. Where if you negate a duality previously, you mm -hmm. couldn't special summon anyway, but now uh, you actually can, since it, the activation was negated, the card was never activated in a sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means so, you, you can chain a bunch of other dualities if you still have another one, I guess. Uh, yeah, and also like, let's say I go both the duality and you go uh, summon judgments. Mm -hmm. I can be like, okay, special summon terror top, where previously you couldn't do that actually. Ah, sick, 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 sick. Okay. Yeah, that, I I do really like that change. It makes so much more sense when you're just reading the cards. Mm, okay, so not the whole like when or when you can effects and stuff. Those are not going to be too much of a bother, or are they still a bit of a bother? Um, well, I mean, to be fair, Konami kind of just solved that by just printing everything with if instead of when. Hell yeah. Okay, that's actually a million <laughs> times. That's a million yeah. times better. <laughs> so, oh. like, technically, um, you know, missing the timing, it still does exist, but Konami just writes every card so that it just doesn't occur anymore. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, fair. So yeah, right, that's cool. it. Uh, that's mostly it. What changed ruling wise, anyway? Okay. So are there like any archetypes and stuff that have come out recently that I probably should like pay attention to or look out for? Or so if you were to like you know get into it competitively, mm -hmm. Virtual World is um, the best deck. I mean, you can like on go on TV and just like type Virtual World and then you can see the cards and I'll just tell you some fun facts about them, I guess. So I guess we have some synchros in here, we have some yeah. continuous spells and traps and stuff. Yeah, the, the most noteworthy thing, if you just go to the, the effect monsters, uh, sure. is they uh, they just have, uh, except for Nyan Nyan, that is, uh, except for the first level 3, all the effect monsters are like, they are like burning abyss monsters if Konami just didn't give a single shit and just <laughs> hurts like, you know, burning abyss monsters can only special summon themselves or activate their favorite spec, right? Yeah, yeah, virtual yeah. world monsters just they don't give a shit and they just have this all of the same effects and just do exactly the same thing and they can activate all their effects without any restrictions so you know very very nicely designed yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> not salty. Not mad, by the way. No, I'm not mad at all. And then instead of going into Dante, which is just like a floater which doesn't do anything, they make uh, uh, the true king of all calamities, also known as very fun dragon. Uh, which, of course, allows your opponent to play a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh! So, very nice. I love this archetype. It's my fave. I love it. <laughs> okay, yeah, like, Chad is pointing out their restrictions so they can't link. That's balanced, right? Totally, man. Totally. <laughs> very balanced. <laughs> Konami did, did such a great job designing this. I love it! I love it. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I would argue this is the best deck just because it's hyper consistent with every card doing exactly the same thing. And then they go into the best monster in the game. Uh, and, you know, if their head is good, they open two times the best monster in the game. So if one VMT wasn't enough to stop you, they have another one. Uh, so yeah, that's probably a deck you might want to look out for. And if you were to get into the competitive game, this is definitely the deck you would want to pick up, probably. Oh. Uh, but we'll take a look at uh, True King of All Calamities for people from our audience who... <laughs> no, I mean, most people will know you, right? Most people will yeah. know like, you and your content and stuff, but then most people wouldn't know. Um, like, who watch my stuff. It's only Vanguard related stuff. People stopped playing the game since like 5Ds and stuff. <laughs> so it's gonna be... <laughs> so it's gonna be... Good for them. <laughs> they made the right choice. <laughs> oh dear God! We tried to sell them the game. Don't do that. We tried to sell. <laughs> tried to sell the game. Nah, I I'm I'm kidding, of course. Like, hopefully, the balance is bound to drop like anytime soon now. And I'm 99% sure the true king of calamities is gonna go to zero. And then, honestly, the format is amazing. Like, for for real, it is. It is really good aside from calamities. Oh, okay, sick, cool. Uh, so we're gonna take a quick read uh, as the as we go along with this so you're gonna kind of try to explain the the more technical side of it or like game states where this can occur more yeah. often um so i'm just going to read the effect once per turn quick effect you can detach one material from this card take like one attribute uh this turn all face of monsters on a field become that attribute and also all monsters in your opponent's position with that attribute cannot activate the effects or attack oh okay i forgot about that part too okay man the attacking part is actually so relevant you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it yeah, because I know like these days there are actually a lot of monsters that are bigger than calamities these days, so it's it's kind of important. <laughs> and some, yeah, well, okay. Uh, monsters that True King, Draco, True King. Oh, okay, this is the yeah, monsters, the, yeah, the True Draco stuff on it. Yeah, it's not it's not really relevant. Yeah, why is that a card? I don't know. To be honest, this card was fair for well, fair is maybe stretching it, but this card was okay for quite a long time because. Um, it's, you have to make it with two level 9s, and there's not exactly a lot of decks that just pump out level 9 monsters easily. But uh, obviously, the part where basically it's just for anybody who remembers Shockmaster, mm -hmm. this card is just, it's just that card. But then it's a quick effect to make it more balanced, I guess. <clears throat> <laughs> the cough. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It's just crazy, like, it shuts down all the on-field effects, and then when you know what your opponent is playing, you can just declare the correct attributes to uh, shut off all their uh, effects in Grave and in Hand as well. Mm -hmm. Because Possession does actually include in Grave and in Hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, uh, Possession is also when you also want to summon something, too, in between summoning something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I'm just... I guess with virtual world uh, itself is actually a pretty good example because all of them are like wind or earth. So if you call, uh, let's say, wind with this, you actually won't be able to summon uh, the wind virtual world monsters from your hand. Since, you know, you, uh, they are in your possession. And then to be honest, like, even if you don't know, if you don't know what your opponent is playing, you can just wait and then when they summon the first card, you can just pay its effects and then shut, up, shut down the rest of the turn anyway. So. So what game stands for this come up often where, because uh, this seems like, okay, cards like Impermanence could stop something like this, right? Okay, yeah, so I'm, now I'm gonna tell you something that will make you go, from, oh, that's so fun. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, if you go back to the, the virtual world cards, uh, okay. uh, they, they, have this, they have this truck card uh, called Chuchay. Uh, uh, okay. And some Chuchay? Okay. Yeah, Chuchay, yeah. So, uh, I mean, 
just read that, and then I'll tell you something super funny that, that they do all the time. Uh, actually, give me a second. I'm gonna share my screen with you, so then you don't have to like be a couple seconds behind while watching the stream. That sounds like a pretty good idea. Just, just give me one second, right? One second. <laughs> uh, th yeah, like sometimes my Discord is like we are just like, yeah. okay. So share your screen again. That's not actually the reason why I want to talk about this card. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and then destroy that card. You can target one yeah. face-up card on the field and destroy it. Yeah, so basically what they what they do just all the time is uh, they would go Calamities in the standby phase, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And then, exactly, you could just go Impermanence and be like, Nice dragon, <laughs> now I can just combo you. But the thing they do is they just chain the trip chat effect and just pop their Calamities. Uh, and the monster actually has to remain on the field for impermanence to negate its effects uh, while the chain is resolving anyway. So that way they just sort of dodge all those cards like uh, Forbidden Chalice, uh, Impermanence, etc. So uh, it's actually almost impossible to uh, negate the calamities, except if you have something like uh, Cypher and Kirikela. Or, or like a double. Negate. Could could a double chalice work? I mean, I, I guess, yeah, that, that would do it. Oh, okay. Huh, interesting. <laughs> so, and then, you know, if they just open really good, they're gonna have double uh, calamities and discard set up as well. So you're always just gonna get calamities and then you just can't do anything and you just go to the next game. Um, well, I mean, that's oversimplifying it, obviously, but for a lot of combo decks specifically, that is the case. Any, any other like contenders, or do we want to stay on virtual world for a bit longer? Do you have any thoughts? Um, no, I, I guess like uh, I said about. Uh, well, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much virtual world. I think if they do uh, bad calamities on the Forbidden Unlimited list, uh, the deck will still be good actually, just because the, uh, the engine is really consistent, right? And it just really consistently does the same thing and, you know, allow for a lot of set type stuff and recursion. But this card is really just. It's just too strong, right? They just go for this and then uh, have fun playing. But something that's quite interesting that happened because uh, Virtual World is basically the best deck and just makes this card all the time is that trap cards are actually a lot better uh, right now because trap cards don't care about uh, being locked out of monster effects. So, uh, you know, that actually might bring us to the next deck that's definitely one of the best decks in the form right now, which is Outlet. Oh, I heard a bit about that, yeah. Okay, I actually love this deck, so I probably won't sound as salty talking about this as when I talked about uh, virtual world. <laughs> uh, do we need to type in golden, or is it? Uh, I mean, like some of the cards are called golden land, and then uh, this is the, basically the only monster in the deck you play. <laughs> this is just the monster. There's no other monsters. It's just this guy. Oh, okay. Aren't there like zodiac variants and stuff like that too? Or yeah, yeah. But I guess we'll get. Uh, We'll get to that a little bit later, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of variants with Elf actually. Because um, basically, what this deck does is uh, if you read the Golden Lord, um, this guy just can bring out himself uh, as a special summon. Mm -hmm. And uh, since he's the only monster that you're required to play in the deck, that means you can splash in this trap related archetype with basically any normal summon related archetype as well, like Zodiac, for example. Mm. Uh, and then basically, the other cards they just they either summon uh, the Golden Lord here, or another zombie, but that hardly ever comes up. They basically just summon this guy, mm -hmm. or then they have a, a couple of disruptive uh, type cars. You have uh, the Golden Lens, uh, what's it called? Conquistador, which you are uh, looking at 
right now sorta anyway um it is on the screen right next to the golden lord if you just yeah that's the one okay. exactly uh they are triple search that's so they summon themselves and then they also provide an additional attack so this one uh, specifically just destroys a card on the field the face of cards then they have one that benches come from the graveyards but the really good part about this deck is that uh exactly that's the one half hero uh, the good part about this deck is that all the trap cards they play they actually float so they have an on field effect and then in the graveyard you can banish them and not during the same turn though to get uh, another trap to the field basically so this it then just every turn uh, it sets up the exact same board state which just makes it super super strong oh okay and like can't you like do they get banished when they leave the field or do they go to the graveyard no 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 they just go to the graveyard and then uh, basically uh, the the trap monsters in the end phase you can banish them to set uh elf mixer cards from your deck and the elf mixer cards uh, they they summon the Golden Lords, and then you can banish those from the graveyard to set your Golden Land Traps uh, from the deck. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. So if you don't have anything that banishes those cards, it just keeps on going for forever, literally. Jesus Christ, okay. But, I mean, those cards are, I, they are insane, because technically speaking, each of the trap cards is plus two, because it pops the cards, it brings itself to the field, and then in the grave has an additional effect to net you another card, which will net you another card, which will net you another card, <laughs> which, of it course, is kind of crazy, but uh, it's slow, right? It's still a trap deck, and uh, it's not like, you know, popping a face of card is the most broken thing in Yu-Gi-Oh! or anything. And it, um, like, from what on, like, I, I guess it also allows you to, um, it also allows you to like thin, just thin your deck, and you could just draw into like your sidebar cards and stuff like that. Or if you need to. I mean, yeah, that, that, that is true as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because every turn you will basically be thinning your card or your deck for uh, usually two cards if you have the, the full engine rolling, which is an Elvix and a Golden Lens. And then each turn you can basically also just pick the way you are going to interrupt your opponents. Usually, uh, most decks only be, uh, play the card that pops the card and the banish one. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're now looking at the Cursed Outlands. This is actually, uh, it's a Clifford Scout. Pay it, feel great, hell yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's just literally Clifford Scout, and then if it goes to the graveyard, you can send uh, either a Golden Lands or an Eldic monster to the graveyard. Jesus so God. even if your opponent, like, you know, would be a or Twin Thrift or whatever, you're still gonna get that one. Alright, okay. That seems, seems alright. And what level is the Eldith? It's level 10. Okay. So, uh, people are like, if they're playing pure elf, like, they're usually playing like the train stuff, like the stuff like that stuff in the uh, in extra. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, and, and also, by the way, the trap monsters, like the team boss, they're level 5 and they're light, so you can actually make the Pulsar Tears with them, which is pretty cool. Wait, even if you go into them, stick it up the game, so I'm not like that. I mean, you could possibly do that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that is pretty funny, but I really do like this deck, and like you mentioned already, uh, the very popular variant of this deck is actually um, the Zoo deck variant. Uh, because, you know, Zoo just requires the normal tool to do basically all the Zoo stuff there is, and then uh, Zoo actually got a new support card. Well, as your Exceed monster is basically got a new support card that happens to interact with Zoo very, very well, which is, um, that's a really long name, but I guess if you just have Zoo, more than gods, then you'll, you'll get there. No, no, just Zeus. Like, um, oh, know, Zeus! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There he is. Yeah. Let's see, two level 12s, but I guess you'll never really make that yeah. in that yeah. material. Uh, once per turn, if an XYZ monster battle this turn, you can also actually summon. This <laughs> I'm not gonna pronounce his full name uh, by using one XC monster you control as material transfers materials to this card. Okay, quick effect. You can detach two materials on this card, send all other cards on from the field to the graveyard. Oh, okay. Send uh, all the cards. Send, send all of them. Send other cards. So he's he's a solo boy. Right. And then once per turn, and if any other cards you control is destroyed by battle or bonus card effect, you can attach one. Okay, that's pretty good, right? Yeah, 
was actually pretty good. However, so you probably did not notice this, but for the paper back to the text too, it is not once per turn. It is not once per chain. Holy crap! Oh, okay. Wait. None of wait, oh yeah, one of them is the ones will turn to attach as well. Yeah, yeah, the attach is that is one. Yeah, yeah. But the, the send effect it's not. So you can basically summon a zoo, then put five zodiac exits on this, mm -hmm. and then you can summon this, you can go effect, they can go in permanent, you you are like, okay, sure, effect again. They can go in permanence again, you go like, okay, cool, effect again, and then you know it's Jesus Christ. It should have resolved at that point. <laughs> I mean, like, sure, you spent, made me spend like five materials or four materials or six materials even, but it, I, these materials I wasn't going to do anything with them anyway, and I cleared your board. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So this card is really, uh, really insane. It's actually also very good in Burning Abyss, um, which I just want to point out. <laughs> <laughs> so if, uh, if you're interested, you can just play Burning Abyss, <laughs> if anything. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Honestly, I think Burning Abyss is really good to form it as well, but I'm not sure if people want to hear me talk about uh, how great I think level 3 feats are when we are discussing meta changes in Yu-Gi-Oh! So. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you can still talk about it, like how it's positioned and stuff like that, how you feel that like other decks, not only uh, BA, can feel right now in the format. That would be done. Yeah, um, anyway, so that's how Zodiac sort of became relevant again. It's usually mixed with Elflick just because both uh, engines they are just perfect. There's perfect synergy. You can send Tanky to summon the Golden Lord, for example, just as some added synergy. But then uh, the Elflick decks also very commonly played with just like 30 trap cards. Mm -hmm. Like literally 30 trap cards. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Um, yeah, it, it is quite insane just because um, the deck is just super resilient and you can play cards like Barrow with Wardors plus a match if you want. And uh, that variant of the deck is pretty popular. And then people have played with Invoked in the past, but I think Zodiac is just now the, the better Romulsa engine basically to go along with it. And then lastly, uh, do you know about um, Red Eye Star Dragoon? Uh, yeah. I, I think I heard a bit about it, yeah. Okay, so that, that card is actually arguably the best monster ever printed in the game. I would say. I mean, you're gonna read it, and then when you read its effects, you're like, okay, that's pretty good, cool, and then it just has another one, and another one, and another one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, For some for reason. A bit of foreshadowing. A bit of foreshadowing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, give me a minute. Give me a minute. So basically, uh, it cannot be a the card effects, right? Which you can see. Can see there and then uh it cannot be targeted by card effects right so you know that's already pretty solid on a 3000 monster and then uh you know as a quick effect it's an only negate by discarding the card and then it also can uh, two times per turn basically destroy a monster opponent's side of the field and then if it does that it burns your opponent for the attack of the monster it banished or destroyed Oh, and also, of course, if you do, do negate a card, it gains 1,000 attack as well, because that's totally necessary, and, uh, yep. <laughs> nice cards. <laughs> it's like five effects, bro. That's like five to six effects, the hell? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. And for, really, like, a really long time, I was super salty about this card as well, but I just kind of learned to accept it. It's not that popular, even, for some reason. Uh, I guess you could, like, still... I don't know, Kaiju it, I guess, but nobody really plays Kaiju these days, right? Uh, I mean, that, that is true, yeah, but like I said, um, most people are not playing Kaiju, and it's also because just Dragoon, it isn't that popular. People are playing it, and most uh, commonly it actually comes out via uh, Planet Planet First Anaconda, which has the effect to just copy a fusion spell, so you copy the effect of Planet Fusion, and then you just bring this out with basically any two monsters, because you just need two effect monsters to make it. So if you want, basically any combo deck can end on this at some point. Hmm. Okay. And now for me, for a person who wants to try to like almost instantly play meta, but have not played the game in a while, what would you probably mm -hmm. recommend as a deck that I could probably go into the entry level? So it's, it kind of depends if you really want to play the best deck or if you want to play something that's just, you know, viable or a good contender. 
like I said, the form is actually pretty, pretty good. I want to say there's a lot of decks that are not the virtual world, but uh, definitely can compete. Even aside from Eldrick, you have uh, the Drytron deck, which is pretty interesting. I want to say it's a ritual deck, but it's it's really not. It just utilizes ritual cards to generate advantage. Uh, that deck's pretty interesting. It's also again like um, like Virtual World, where every card basically does the same thing, but then with an, uh, an additional effect. Like Alpha adds a ritual monster when it summons, and then Gamma summons another drive from the graveyard when it summons. And you can summon all of them by discarding either a drive from card or a ritual card, a ritual monster. <laughs> this is fun. I don't think they play this. You are looking. Uh, no, I was about to say. You're literally targeting the only card that, <laughs> that's not in the deck. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt they play this, so it's cute, but it's not It's not what you go for. Because, uh, like, it only negates a summon. If you negated everything, you probably want to play one of it, I guess. Maybe. It's a side deck. Yeah, and <laughs> it, it is pretty cute, I must say. But yeah, it's, the deck's just super consistent in basically just dropping engine. Uh, Engine negates because they tend to end on uh, the Herald of Ultimateness, which you might be familiar with. Uh, yeah, 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 I am. Oh, okay. So this deck is definitely viable. It's really good. Um, it's just it's one of those deck decks where like if your opponent goes calamities, it's just really hard to win because the deck is just all combo and if they just uh, calamities you for light, there's just almost nothing you can do. Mm. And I, I tend to see people play like Mind Drain and stuff these days. Is that because of this or? I, I mean, I haven't really seen people play that, but I definitely, I've thought about it before myself, to be honest. Because it is uh, it is good against this deck and it's also good against the virtual world because all of their summoning conditions are like hand effects. <laughs> so it is definitely pretty, uh, like a funny card <laughs> okay. to play. Like, I, can, I can definitely see people stealing games by just flipping Mind Drain. But yeah, this is one of the, uh, definitely like a tier 1 deck even, the Triton deck. Mm. And then uh, Phantom Knight, which is like personally one of my favorite decks in the format. Uh, I would say a lot of people are saying it's like a rogue or, you know, when they're making tears, like they're like, oh, that's just a rogue deck. But I definitely think it's, um, it's, it's easily tier 2 if not people would represent it, because uh, the combo it does is arguably, arguably the strongest in the, in the game right now. Purely decade wise, because you know, calamities is of course stronger than a couple of decades, but. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I forgot the artist is on one again. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just before the, the Phantom Rage set was released, uh, released which uh, actually uh, dropped a uh, Phantom Rage Storm skill, which was a huge, huge boost to the deck. They did uh, put Rusty to one, yeah. Okay. Honestly, I was super, super scared. So Rusty was just gonna break the game again. But it's, uh, it just didn't, so that was nice. <laughs> but you do play it like almost all your lists, I guess, that do run like level 3s and stuff. Uh, I, I mean, honestly, I think the only deck that's playing this, uh, the Rusty is the Phantom Knight deck, and then I think Goki is playing it as well. Uh, yeah, I, I, they just do some like Cyber's Link stuff. I'm not completely familiar with the deck, so. But I do know they do somehow end on Rusty. Ah oh, yeah, Thorn Skull there, I have the death card. Death card's insane. It's insane. Stick on So who are you? Level 3 Dark Knight. So some of the best elements and some of the best archetypes. <laughs> yep. Reinforcements are always still a card. Uh, Sunwalk, uh, Phantom Knight's card for the Phantom Knight. And then the Phantom Knight's card to go into the graveyard anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so... Why Yeah, I mean, so the card is good. <laughs> <laughs> to make it not bad, that, that's that's why each. Like, mm -hmm. like, yeah, this card is insane. Especially the graveyard effect is... Uh, just this card by itself, if any random discard will allow you to end on... Um, a Dragoon, a Rusty, a Fog Blade, and... Um, any Dark Rank 4. 
or any other link to if you want to go that route. Hmm. So that is pretty insane in my opinion. Okay, okay. So this deck is nice, and then you also have uh, Adamant Spater, which was one of the best decks in the previous format before Block Dragon got uh, a band. Ada, Ada. Oh, oh, Ada. Okay. Ada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. I heard it. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Adam Mansipator. So this Analyzer. Uh, Dragite. Uh, Leonai Raphite. And then you have Researcher. Oh, sick. And I guess these are like the egg forms of the evolution. Oh, I see how we did it. Alright, cool. Little yeah, bit I more. would say that usually like. Uh, yeah, people see it like the, the guys or and the girl are like the, the miners and then the eggs are like the rocks they mine, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but basically the, especially the monster, uh, not the monsters, but the, the miners, so the, the researcher, analyzer and um, what's the other one called, called again? All oh, right, seeker. Mm -hmm. uh, they are the, the really good ones. I mean, you should just uh, read their effects probably to get a grasp of it. Um, and then you'll probably get why they are pretty, pretty good. Alright. If you control an Anamancipator monster except for a Mana Pencil Seeker, you can special summon this card in your hand. Having having those kind of conditions is always insane. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's good, in no matter what format. Uh, during your main phase, you can excavate the top 5 cards. Holy, okay. Uh, if you do, you can special summon one excavated level 4 lower rock monster, non tuner rock monster, and also place the rest of the, the bottom of your deck in any order so you can stack your deck legally. Yeah, I guess, yeah. But the thing is, like, the, the excavate effect, where you excavate the top five, is basically the shared effect they all have, the mm -hmm. miners. Mm -hmm. So, um, what you do is usually, like, Seeker you can only summon when you control an Emancipator monster, and Life you can only summon when uh, your opponent controls, controls monsters and you don't. Mm -hmm. And then Researcher you can summon when you control any rock monster, so they are sort of like extenders, uh, just inherently. And then um, the digging for basically each of them is just a plus one, right? If you excavate uh, a rock monster, a rock non shooter, and mm -hmm. the deck is just basically only rock non shooters, uh, including Kalki Maigo, uh, so Kalki Maigo Guardian, which you probably know, which is the Kalki Maigo that uh, is a rock and you can trigger it to negate a monster effect. So um, it usually tries to get out that. And then after that, go for some uh, hokey firebreaks plays, for example, uh, which are inherently just protected by the by the guardian. Uh, because the new stuff, because uh, it's of monster effects, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I you can get hit by uh, Nibiru, for example, yeah, or Ash Blossom, or whatever hand traps people are playing these days. Oh, huh. right. okay. Let's see. And then it just kind of combos, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so Hulk, I, I was kind of familiar a little bit with what it did, but let's take a look. Two monsters including a tuner, of course. Um, if this is Link Summon, you can switch summon one level 3 or lower tuner from uh, your hand or deck in defense. But if uh, Canada activates its effects this turn, then your opponent's main phase or battle phase, quick effect, you can manage this card, you control, special summon one tuner, synchro monster from your uh, extra deck. Oh, I remember that people used to play like TG Wonder Magician with this. To be yeah, able to yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. Yeah. I think that was mostly like an OCG thing though, but uh, I don't think that ever saw major play the TCG. Mm -hmm. But th this is the card, yeah. And honestly, before uh, this meta, this card was dominating the, the TCG format. But they basically hit every good shooter in existence, so now it's not <laughs> as powerful. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, okay, okay. But I definitely think the Elements Painter deck is really cool, it's really fun. Um, I think it's a little bit underrated this format even because it doesn't really struggle with the hand traps that a lot of the decks that uh, our meta currently struggle with, which makes it a pretty good uh, contender if you want to play a combo deck, in my opinion. So that's definitely something to look out for. It's probably also not like if you want to pick up the game in real life, right? I don't think the cards should be that expensive. But like, no, I mean, what what would you suggest? Uh, you like Shadow, right? Yeah. I mean, you can you can play Shadow. Wait, what? You can just play like Shadow. 
because I, I picked up a schism a few days ago because I thought like oh, no okay way. Yeah, I picked up a, a, a schism a few a few weeks ago because I thought, well, hey, should I got a little bit of support? I'll just pick up some of the cards because I like the deck, right? <laughs> so uh, basically, uh, I'm not sure if you know the Yugi Tuber uh, deck. Uh, no, no, I don't know. Uh, well, um, he, I think he he kind of firstly just made the deck a little bit more popular because there's now some. It's basically a trap shadow deck. It's just a stun deck with shadow cards. Mm -hmm. Uh, with, and it, it's quite good as like an anti-meta deck, and I think you would like you you would enjoy playing it. Uh, but I like I like it playing good combo though. <laughs> like I like it playing combo because I prefer it a little bit of the synchro variants and stuff with it, and being able to exceed sometimes. I kind of like having it at the toolbox. -y, I, I mean, guess. you can play. Uh, someone in chat is saying it as well. Uh, Kira three to four is like invoke shadow is a thing. Oh, God, I very unlucky because that is definitely the more combo variant of the deck. <laughs> I don't know, like if you want to play combo, like I said, Elementipator is really cool. Mm -hmm. I also think it's pretty safe from the ban list. And then, oh, I almost forgot to talk about one of the best decks in the current form actually, which is uh, Dragon Link. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. But... Um, I, I did have a lot of the cards because I wanted to play Rockets just as a fun deck. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like uh, just rocket cards and then good generic dragon cards. And then you just do an insane combo that your opponent won't be able to beat ever, and then uh, you win the game. It is, uh, I quite like it to be honest. Also, the combo it isn't as impressive as it was before, like, it does quite some hits. Because so. mm. I remember that, like, what an old combo used to be with, like, uh, Harold. The tribute, the tribute calling me. Oh, <laughs> the link to you used when you tribute it off, you can like. Oh, you, you mean uh? Yeah, you mean the heretic seal. Yes, right. thank God. Yes, yeah. yes, heretic yeah, seal. They, looks, they, like, yeah, they, they still end on that. Yeah, that's exactly that's kind of what it still does to be honest. They usually end on like the heretic seal with a uh, brutal savage and uh, his face, uh, red hot dragon archfiend abyss. I yeah. think the name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that one negates like face up cards. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's the one. That's the one. Okay. Oh, okay. Like, oh, the uh, chat is also mentioning Burn Up. <laughs> oh, God. So, I think most of you guys also didn't know. I, uh, other content creator that we happen to both know, uh, Joshua and I, is called Tatsum. And I think I, I did see the deck being played, I think, at like a remote fight invitational a few weeks back. And I was kind of like chilling in the chat. I had no idea what was going on. Pretty funny, and I was looking into Tri Brigade because I also asked Josh as well, like a couple months ago, like, hey, this archetype seems pretty cool. And I was like, no, don't do that, don't do that, don't pick it up, it's bad. Yeah, I was like, ah, okay, Josh. <laughs> and I just left it alone. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm gonna be honest, I still don't think, like, the Tri Brigade cards are broken in any way. Uh, but it's definitely, like, it's fun. But I don't know. It's, it's just kind of uh, the the field that put up is funny. You use some like a barrier statue, and then you can protect it with uh, their spell card in the paper, or like Link Rebo and stuff, which is cute. But it's it's really not that good playing through disruptions and stuff. You can play like eleven team pill in a hand trap though, which is nice. Because <laughs> most of them are like a wing beast hand traps and stuff too, right? Yeah, you can. There, you even like can add DD Crow if you already have the the nerve on your hand, which is the level one wing beast. Like it's definitely it's a really cute deck. Like I have to give it that, that it's it's cute. Oh, okay, and it looks like they're and getting like one support card uh, down the pipeline. Yeah, apparently so. Yeah. Okay, what does this one do? Um, you can discard two cards and then oh, discarding cards, yuck! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Mm. Ah, sus. Um. Target two, uh, uh, target one of your, one only. Target one of your banished level four low wing beast, uh, beast warriors, or wing beast and special summon it. Uh, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can activate its effect. You cannot special summon from monsters for the rest of the turn. Also, um, except for trigger brigade monsters, also you can add one trigger brigade spell trap from your deck to your hand and then place one card from your deck. Oh god! Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say I don't think this card is very good. No, 
I will have to concur. You discard two to get one, and then you ponder? Is that yuck? What? No. Yeah, I mean, like, all the other ones have the, the shared effect where you can banish uh, Beast Warrior, Wing Beast, and Beast from your graveyard to uh, link some of those, basically, so that's, that's pretty plus. Uh -huh. but, um, you're, you still have to summon Beast Warriors and stuff, right? Beast, Beast Warrior, Wing Beast. Yeah. You can I mean, yeah, I, I get that you set up the graveyard, but you're still going minus one. So. Yeah. In my brain, this is minus just two. Set up, set up your graveyard while not going minus one, which is, I guess, a little bit better. Yeah, because you could just use Foolish Barrow and it does the same thing. This is just Foolish Barrow. Yeah, but that's also minus one. Ew. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's the point. Well, yeah. Bro, Dragon Link goes like plus nine when it's doing this combo. Why would you want to go minus one? That's like, uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but uh, no, in all honesty, I, I don't, I don't know. It feels like this is too much commitment for a uh, singular card. Yeah, and then also the rest of the deck is just kind of underwhelming, like I said. So, uh, then probably the last deck, no, you might, you might like this. Is Ankits? Ankits is kind of good again. Uh, no, I, I thought they were cute. I never really liked them. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to play, you can, you can play them. They got this new Link Monster, which is a Link One. Like its effect isn't even relevant. Just the fact that it's, it's a link one is uh, was enough to kind of just push it into the meta game again. Okay. Let's take a look. Oh wait, there's a link two. They always had. Wait, where's the? Oh, there's a link one. Hell yeah. Uh, meow meow. Mm. Meow meow meow. I guess w whatever it's called. Yeah. And emancipated like prank kids is cool. Is that true? Yeah, so basically, yeah, basically uh, one of the prank kids is, uh, Roxy's is a rock, so you can hit it off the, the miners from, from the Elements Pager deck, and then you can just sort of generate advantage by going into the, the Meow Meow and then going into the Lepsis, then going into the Link 2 and summoning the other Roxy's from their deck. It's basically just free advantage. Oh. I, I, do, I do agree the deck is cool, by the way, for sure. But you would never play this, or? Uh, but, oof, oof. <laughs> to be honest, to be honest, I kind of like it, but then I also I hate playing against this deck. Like, I had to play against this at a remote duel local, and I almost just like when he summoned the first Frankie's card, I almost just like shut off my camera and just went to do something else because I the deck's just so tiresome. <laughs> we could find a way to just pause your camera and just tell your point and just wait on your back. Yeah, I don't know, like the deck, it's not... It, it also just dies to stuff like Skullmeister is really popular right now. And um, it, it, sometimes it just dies to when you go normal summon the prank it and then link it up to the Meow Meow, you go prank it attack, your opponent goes Skullmeister or Ash, and you're just like, hey, cool bro, your turn. Which is kind of underwhelming. Fair and it's not even like sometimes it does that, it does that a lot of the time. <laughs> Okay. But I definitely stay, I still think it's playable, right? I mean, for sure, if you want to go like play Dutch locals or Dutch regionals or something, bro, you can easily, if you're a good player, win every tournament with this deck. Probably. <laughs> he said probably. Maybe. It's just maybe if I don't like bot every combo and play with it. The artwork I'm just is kind of sick. Uh, yeah, I'm just talking about the pure uh, crank it deck uh, here. Obviously, the Animated Spader deck will easily play through one of the hand traps. Because that's literally what the deck does. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think the art's cute as well. Like, I I sort of really like it, but then at the same time, I really really hate it. So <laughs> a little bit, a little bit awkward. <laughs> uh, but I think those are mostly the decks that actually see play right now. Probably. I think we, yeah, I think we covered all of the the meta decks anyway. Okay, sick. I'll take a look at the pot guy that you were talking about with Shadal, so maybe I might like, maybe find some things to add to it, but if it comes oh, up... Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, Kira is saying like, uh, Dino is, is a decent one, I definitely have to agree, I think Dino is a good deck. <laughs> I think he's been saying that for a while here now, so far he was like, nah, dude, Dino, but Dino DNA, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro, Dino is just, <laughs> it's just been the same deck ever since it was released in like 2017, and then it's just always, it's just fine. I mean... <laughs> 
uh, conductor is just a really good boss monster. Miscellaneous source is broken, so. Yep. Oh yeah, it's back at three, Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, I guess maybe something interesting to look at uh, is uh, Pot of Prosperity, which is a new pot card, which is also uh, something worth talking about, probably. Prosperity. There we go. Pot of Prosperity. Banish 3. It, it will be like some convoluted restriction on it, I bet. Banish 3. That's, that's what you would think, but uh, <laughs> I mean, just continue reading, let's go. Alright, cool. Um. Banish three or uh, six cards from your choice from your extra deck phase down of your choice. Hell yeah, okay. Because when I played a lot of, um, what should we call it? Um, oh my god. Yeah. Why am I remembering? Uh, they were spellcasters. They interrupted your opponent's plays. They also played like pot. They played a pot that would banish stuff from your extra deck too. Oh, you mean all oh. Yes. Oh my god. Why do I forget this? I love that deck, by the way. You do? Nice. Yeah, yeah. I played it for. I never played any event with this, but uh, aside from like Dark Spell and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I really. I, I love that deck. I played it for so long. <laughs> yes. I, I love the deck as well. The. I don't know. It just felt so rewarding when you kind of just outplayed your opponent. When you just kind of did your line of play correct. Um, yeah, yeah. I agree. Very rewarding for good deck. See, phase down for the rest. Uh, so for the rest of this turn, after this resolves, any damage your opponent takes is half. Okay, it's not too bad. Also, yeah, it's fine. Uh, excavate cards from the top of your deck equal to the number of cards banished. Add one excavate card from your hand. The rest is placed at the bottom of your deck. You can only add. Wait, what? There's no special summon restriction or nothing? No, it's, it's just a duality, but then without any actual restriction, basically. I mean, for the, like the turn you actually this card, you can so you can't really act, like play this with other bots. I mean, you, you can, and people are doing this, and it's good, but you can't do it in the same turn. So it's basically just full of duality, but then... Uh, oh, you cannot draw cards. Oh yeah, I might have... Yeah, the small text. The small, yeah. small cards, alright. Uh, yeah. So this card is seeing a lot of play, because it's just, like, it's just full of duality for every deck. Uh, is this the same thing like a whole lot of other card effects though? Just to make sure I don't get a small brain or be small brain by asking this question because then it's going to be a stupid one. Um, so could you just use a draw effect before this? Uh, no, no, because it says you cannot draw cards by effects this turn. This turn. This card. Oh, so not for the rest of the turn. Okay. Yeah, it. exactly. So this card, it knows you activated the draw card before. Oh, okay. Sick. Sick, 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 sick. Oh, it doesn't like limit adding, so it's, it's nice though. Yeah, exactly. Like, a lot of decks just don't play any draw cards anyway, and just play this. So, very, very good card. Let's see. Oh, hey, Paris, be friends. <laughs> I mean, if you're... I, I, I guess they're not the same place, so, sure. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Thank you for the follow. Hopefully you're doing... Okay. Uh, maybe talk about Dogmatica. I saw a lot of people talking about, like, punishment and stuff like that, too, as well. I mean, yeah, Dogmatica is, Dogmatica is definitely, like, um, yeah, I, I would say that's a meta deck. Orcus, Paleo Frogs, both are, like, they're, they, you know, they're fine. <clears throat> they top, like, the, the remote jewel stuff, because, not, like, not a lot of people are playing those, right? Mm -hmm. They're not super, they're not popular, like, real life events, let's put, let's put it like that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that, it's, it's just kind of, uh, you know, there's nothing else to do, so people play it, but it's, like, a lot of the... But the really big names, they don't even partake in them, right? And I, I get why. I've been playing them myself, and I I quite like it, um, in a way, because it does allow me to play Yu-Gi-Oh! with actual real cards, which is cool. But mm -hmm. I think, like, if the if the meta was um, more competitive, I don't think decks like Orcus or Palio would... Um... <laughs> How about the best deck? Pe Pendulum, let's go, bro! Pendulum, <laughs> best deck, se six of gates, seven of gates! <laughs> <laughs> Season 78, we're still putting on 15 negates, Pendulum. So, yeah. Bro, I, I love Triff Gaming, he's the best. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Dogmatica is just basically a really splashable engine. Mm -hmm. uh, and mostly people are just playing like Triple Nadir Servant to Search Ecclesia. 
and then one Ecclesia and just like a couple of punishments and then sometimes they're playing Fleur de Lis and depending on the engine they might also play Maximus to get access to uh, the Chabot cards. Wait, what is... We'll read what Maximus does, give us a second. Yeah, Maximus the level, the big monster on the right side. You can yep. uh, banish one fusion exceed synchro link monster from your graveyard, especially some of this card from your hand. Jesus Christ, this condition though. <laughs> this is actually a heavy condition to summon. Uh, you just have to banish one, you don't have to banish all of them. Oh! Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, can't read. Alright. Uh, <laughs> during, <your main, laughs> during your main phase, you can activate this effect. Send two monsters with different names from your extra deck to the graveyard. Your opponent also sends two monsters from the extra deck to the graveyard yeah. as well. You can special summon extra deck for the rest of the turn. You can. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, so the thing you do with this is uh, either you send uh, Elder Entity Untus, which just pops a card. Mm -hmm. But what's very popular is you send. Um, there's this new Shadow Fusion monster, which is uh, called Shadow Epcolone. Oh, I and picked up a couple of her. Yeah, nice. Okay, yeah, so uh, his grave effect or her grave effect is when um, you can add a Shadow card to your hand and then discard a card from your hand. So what you do is. Mm -hmm. You add Schism, you discard another card, and then you can use the what you sent from Maximus uh, f uh, for the Schism. So you can banish like Ep Clone and another Dark Monster to bring out Winda in your opponent's turn, which is obviously pretty strong because Winda is just a good card. <laughs> Fair enough. Huh. So that's kind of, that's kind of popular. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we don't really need to take a look at the Shadow cards. I picked up most of those already. Just sort of like I haven't really like played with any of them. But uh, if I just pick them up, it'll it should be it should be okay. Yeah, I think the deck's quite good. It's also just one of those decks that's a little bit underrated, I think, because nobody's playing it. Uh, should all you mean or? Don't yeah, should all. Oh, see, you can explain me most of the stuff already. It's been like close to an hour. Um, yeah. Would you like to do this again? I mean, and sure, man. Just uh, I like talking about card games, so I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So we'll we'll have this as sort of like an introduction, refresher course, a a how to guide of picking up your decks or what archetypes you probably want to consider. And maybe next time we could talk about like some staples, I guess. That'd be okay, I think. Oh like, yeah, I mean that sounds good. Like some uh, some staples that we like wanna like a shopping list, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so, cool. Uh do you wanna like do you have like any last words, any tags or anything that you wanna shout out? I mean, uh, I guess just, you know, shout out to my YouTube channel, uh, which is Joshua's Boosters. Uh, again, I do uh, mostly, like, really in-depth video content. Mm -hmm. um, from, like, a competitive standpoint, looking at broke decks, and then I also do content on the Digimon card game. Mm -hmm. If you haven't checked out the Digimon card game, by the way, I highly recommend you do so, because the game is actually amazing. I love it. Um, and uh, I guess uh, shout out to uh, Complexity Card Gaming, because they are my boys, so... <laughs> oh god that takes me back jesus christ <laughs> all right cool and i think that actually comes up to our end of the stream too as well that's yeah that's literally my time for today oh, um, perfect <laughs> it comes it round up really well uh so i'd like to thank each and every last one of you awesome people for tuning on in stopping on by this has been jj and <laughs> okay, thank y'all for tuning in. Stop saying goodbye. Be awesome, stay awesome, guys. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>